Um, hello, thank you very much. Um, thank you for joining this talk. Uh, we have just finished our Mr. Beam Kickstarter campaign last week. Um, right now, we are here to share our experiences on crowdfunding a Kickstarter or a hardware project. And well, here we go. <laughs> well, first of all, has anybody thought about um, crowdfunding something? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we are Thea and Philip. I'm Philip. That is Thea. Uh, we uh, are software developers with a computer science background, and uh, we're working as app developers and uh, web developers for a few years. And somehow got bored. Uh, Thea's startup didn't go anywhere. I was working as freelance <laughs> freelancer, and did, well, we needed something new. And uh, yeah, and something new to to learn and every and. Stuff like that, and we have never done hardware. Uh, we have no idea about crowdfunding, finance, finances, marketing, sales, anything like that. So we thought, let's do a hardware project and go on Kickstarter. Yeah, a um, little bit about our project. Um, it was a uh, Mr. Beam. Uh, Mr. Beam is a do-it-yourself laser cutter and engraver kit. It was born um, because we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into 3D printing, and we needed some kind of um, goal, some kind of project uh, to not to just humble around to to get a little bit more focused on the topic. So we decided um, we built one of these uh, do-it-yourself laser cutters, um, first with a laser diet from a DVD burner, then later we <laughs> upgraded it uh, to a 1 watt uh, class 4 laser. And um, while well, we decided to open the hardware and the software, um, we didn't release very much yet. We already released a little bit software, but um, there's still some cleanup to do in the hardware yeah, stuff. We managed to send out the, the hardware rewards for, for all the backers just in the week before Christmas, and now we're like working on the backlog. backlog. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, everything was done with open source software, and uh, that was an open source hardware, and that was uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to open source our project as well, because um, we started. October last year, and right now we just finished the, the the whole Kickstarter thing, and we wouldn't have been that fast without um, all these uh, things you see here: the open SCAD uh, for engineering the 3D parts, um, the key cut for making electronic circuits. Uh, Inkscape, Gerbil, Octoprint, Arduino, you all know these projects and um, we want to say a big thanks for everybody who contributed in that. <laughs> so uh, we, you, we already said we, we chose Kickstarter, but uh, in the beginning we didn't know where to go, where, where, on which platform to put it. Um, and we yeah, uh, looked at different ones, and um, but we didn't really know if anybody wanted to have a home-built DIY laser cutter. So we went, we, we went the safe way and chose just the biggest one because Kickstarter is the market leader, or was at the time. Uh, yeah, and so to be safe, we choose Kickstarter, uh, which made everything a little bit harder because in Germany there's no Kickstarter re representation, so we had to... Uh, Use Tia's brother, <laughs> who is a green card. He has a green card and lives in the U.S. and set up all the the things you need, like a bank account and Amazon Payments account and all those accounts, basically. Uh, and and the company, in the end, and that made it possible for us to to have a Kickstarter project. Well, started from Germany, uh, and one. Big preparation was a uh, working pro prototype uh, because at that time Kickstarter only accepted hardware projects if you could present a working prototype. I think it changed in the meantime, but uh, yeah, we 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 worked like two months or something on the on the prototype and then got all the the uh, bureaucratic stuff set up and. Uh, went on planning the the whole thing and uh, the, how we set up the campaign. So a uh, big part was planning or estimating the costs we would have. So that's, that's uh, for example, the hardware, like the, the, the source materials that we bought, stabber motors, 
plastic parts, cables, everything. And also uh, the, the money it takes to, to put all the things to get together, and that's then the cogs, the cost of goods sold, as I've learned. And uh, also we had to do a, a, a more prototyping and uh, live from, from the money, or take into account the money we had to we use to live off. <laughs> Uh, and we almost forgot some other things like lawyers and tax advisors. And then you also, also have the fees you pay to Kickstarter and Amazon payments. And yeah, then there's taxes, everything. So, if, and, but we, we managed to, I think we, we did a pretty good job calculating the stuff. I mean, it's not like we got rich or something, but uh, well, we didn't get poor either. <laughs> Or not poorer than before. Well, as we mentioned, we didn't have any financial background, and it was one of the most difficult parts how to approach that. Yeah. Uh, and luckily, we added big buffers, <laughs> money and time-wise, uh, like 20 to 30 percent in both. And we ended up using the money buffer like right away, <laughs> <laughs> spend it all, and. Yeah, also we, have, we, we took a little bit more time, uh, used up the buffer in, in the time, and also, well, spent one and a half months more than we planned. But it's not too bad for a Kickstarter project, I've heard. Um, and then if you have all the costs together and you, you, you know what it's going to cost you to, to, to produce all the things and send it out, you need to think of shipping. Um, then you have to uh, produce a number that you put on Kickstarter, and also think of a, of a comp, uh, total funding sum that um, that you want to like. You don't want to even if you uh, can produce one 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 kit uh, for for a reasonable like uh, uh, price. You don't want to start uh, produce just one. Like you, you need maybe at least sixty to go to get it going because it's not worth the the the, the work otherwise. And yeah, luckily we managed to get uh, four times the money we asked for. So yeah, we were good on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, second second task was um, to present the project on Kickstarter. Therefore, you need a video. Um, that was quite difficult either. Um, we re read a lot about uh, successful Kickstarter campaigns and advices and whatever. And um, the most interesting but the most important part was the you have to tell a story. You don't have to be professional, but it must be some kind of story behind it. And um, first of all, we we made a video. It was almost ready. It was um, yeah, it was edited until the end, and we showed us some friends. Uh, we showed it to some friends, and it was uh, the first feedback was so well. Um, yeah, that's nice, but. Uh, I don't care about um, if the electronic circuit is working with 12 to 24 volts. <laughs> and, um, well, um, we had to admit, yeah. okay, that's perfectly true. <laughs> and we spent two months on the prototype, de developing the technical details, and then we wanted to present all the, the things we thought of and how we built it and everything, but in the end, the people didn't care about how, we, how it works, more like what it... And, and, we're more interest, interested in what it does or what it can do. <laughs> and in that moment, you are so proud of what you have done, especially if you didn't have any knowledge about electronics before, and so <laughs> you wanted to mention it, and, well, um, <laughs> we learned it. Okay, just just drop it. It's not important at all. Tell the story and, and show the use cases. Show use cases is quite important, that the people are getting some idea quite early in the video what to do with the thing you are trying to promote here. <laughs> yeah. We, we, revi we revised the video and uh, made a set second iteration, and that was quite better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, also in Kickstarter, I don't, I don't know about the other crowdfunding platforms. You can like preview um, before before you actually publish the project to every to the world. You can pre uh, preview the campaign and send it with a special link to your friends or colleagues or whatever. So we didn't know about that <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's very helpful because you just it's the, the 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 step to the last and yeah it's really helpful to show it to somebody else well then um we started the campaign uh at two o'clock in the night because we thought well the us just has um finished work then and that might be a good start 
Um, we ended up without some sleep for several days. Um, we got tons of emails and um, needed a lot of coffee to answer them all. And um, even if you make some FAQs, uh, people are just continuing asking questions. <laughs> that was a really, really exhausting time. First, we thought, um, well, in that time during the campaign, it was running 32 days, uh, we could develop the software further and maybe um, make some research about uh, third-party suppliers. But um, we really needed almost 24 hours uh, for supporting all the questions, uh, for answering all the questions. Yeah, finally, after the campaign, um, you have to wait uh, three to four weeks um, for the money because first Amazon Payments is collecting that from the credit cards, from the backers. Sometimes the credit cards fail, then Amazon Payments is uh, trying that another time. And well, it's, it took some time until we, we really got the money and could order the stuff we needed. Um, another point is we got a lot of emails offering help. Um, there were somehow really useful. Someone saying, hey, I'm a very friendly beta tester. <laughs> if you need, just give me, a, drop me a line. Another one is, uh, the, the curious one, it was some kind of, uh, hey, um, we are Kari Feinstein style lounge and we want to promote your product um, accord, uh, next to other big brands like Gucci and Dolce and Gabbana in the, <laughs> in the Golden Globe Awards. And you're so, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't funny. know if this fits here. <laughs> and so we ignored them. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, yeah, we, then when we finally had the money, we had to like transfer it to Germany and, uh, and finally could start shopping for all the good stuff. We uh, did both bought maybe half of the stuff we ordered or the, the parts in China through Alibaba and AliExpress. Very helpful there. It's a little bit... Uh, Oh, I was a little bit afraid before I, I, I uh, ordered the motors there because it was I was wiring like seven thousand euros to a bank account in in Hong Kong, and all we I had was an email saying yeah yeah we'll ship the motors if you if, after we <laughs> receive the money. <laughs> so, but we were lucky. Uh, we got all of our parts. Uh, nothing really was bad or didn't didn't arrive. Um, the motors actually, they sent us some wrong tracking number and they, they, they thought it's already delivered. We checked the tracking number, it was delivered somewhere in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> I was really getting afraid. <laughs> but the, but they sent us different tracking numbers. Then. It's yeah. kind of a strange feeling if you feel the responsibility of delivering some stuff to your backers who are so kind and give you such a money and then the money is somewhere in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then um, another very, very uh, new task to us was uh, to make an electronic shield for the the Arduino. Um, it's uh, basically a combination of stepper drivers and a laser diode driver in our case. Um, we made four prototypes uh, because if you make one mistake in this part, um, it's not upgradable with a bug fix release or something. <laughs> um, it, it has to work uh, from the first production run. And it's something that's really was really new to us being software developers. It's yeah. <laughs> don't, you're not used to that. And, um, well, uh, the worst case happened. We had the third prototype ready, tested, and it was super working well. <laughs> uh, but then the manufacturer of one very important IC uh, said, hey, sorry, we discontinued this chip. And we said, oh, uh, well, <laughs> what now? <laughs> then we had to find an alternative and had to do a fourth prototype, which luckily uh, was quite good from um, at the first iteration. <laughs> yeah, we were a little bit experienced at that point, so it went yeah. a little faster. Um, yeah, we have a quite a few plastic parts that we need for the gentry and the, well, for the whole device, basically. We thought about injection molding, but somehow the numbers weren't high enough, so it's too expensive or doesn't make sense for a small number. And we ended up 3D printing all this, uh, the parts. It was 7,000 parts in the end, like 90 kilograms of plastic. 
and spent uh, our four printers uh, spent four months uh, printing. We spent maybe I don't know 600 hours uh, maintaining and well taking plastic parts off and cleaning the <laughs> the, the, the extruders and everything. So it's not the best idea to well to produce that many <laughs> to print three <laughs> D print that many things or yeah it's well it costs us some time. <laughs> <laughs> right, well we we. Um, luckily, we set some upper limit um, on our Kickstarter, Kickstarter rewards, and we almost reached the limit. And in the end, I would say it was almost a little bit too high because all these um, manual tasks we have had to do, which are not enough for, for mass production, but are way too much for two persons alone. For instance, cable trees, if you're crimping cables, cutting cables, and whatever, soldering stuff, um, it just takes... A lot of time. Um, we had to deburr steel rods. Uh, we spent a lot of time finding a correct steel, or a, a good steel supplier uh, <laughs> who is um, delivering already the, the the correct length of the piece uh, of the steel. And um, well, in the end, we ended up um, hiring two students <laughs> helping us, <laughs> which was an additional. Um, money factor in the end <laughs> but without them we wouldn't have made it yeah um also the yeah the manual parts were really the the, the um where the problems lied so um i on the picture you see the uh the part the frame parts of you need four of them for each <coughs> kit we had 260 kits and yeah, that was after me after cutting all of those and before drilling holes into them. So that was a few, a, a good few weekends spent. Uh, yeah, and also we spent a much time. So th uh, the effort in the, for for starting something like that is the first time effort is really big. Like you have to find all the suppliers, go through the Alibaba and check, yeah, check the ratings and. That must sometimes people uh, they they promise you st uh, things that they can't deliver, um, yeah, and the drilling was really bad. <laughs> well, but in the end we had some fun as well. Um, first of all, we were, was, were invited to the Fabcon 3D in Erfurt. That was a small um, 3D printing fair. It was quite nice. Then. Um, some weeks later, we were invited at the Fab 10 conference of all the Fab Labs in Barcelona. This was a really nice experience. There we met some, uh, some people from the government of Georgia. They invited us to an innovation camp in Georgia. It was <laughs> some kind of nice holiday in between the whole Kickstarter campaign. Um, we were invited to TM Wissen at Servus TV. That's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the TV station of one of the biggest media companies, the Red Bull Media. Don't laugh. <laughs> um, we went to the Maker Fair Rome, which was a really huge fair. It was impressive. And finally, we um, got an article uh, in the Make magazine, formerly known as CT Hex. Um, there we have the journalist sitting in the first <laughs> row who wrote the article. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we made we made uh, a little road trip um, through the US um, because we wanted to deliver some of the parts in person. And our Kickstarter campaign was based in the US. We um, yeah, we had the great idea that it would be cheaper to <laughs> deliver, to not spend the, the money on the shipping to the US, but just deliver it ourselves. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> and um, in the US, we made some very inspiring person, this guy. Um, that's actually Lord British. Maybe one or another one knows him. No. He founded some nice software company, Origin, in the 90s. <laughs> okay. <You know. laughs> and after all, um, well, uh, it was a huge experience. Um, I'm really glad that we have done it. 
you probably as well. <laughs> it was kind of exhausting as well. Um, some, some takeaways. Um, first of all, the cost calculation advance is super important. We did our best, but it was not enough. <laughs> but well, compared to other Kickstarter projects, we have made it somehow quite good. We are only two months delayed. We are <laughs> round about zero zero <laughs> right now. Um, so uh, I would I would recommend if someone was doing some kind of crowdfunding, uh, think about scaling before, um, even if you are not sure about if your idea will be a success or not. Just be prepared for that. Um. Yeah, about the calculate cost calculation. Now, there, there are Kickstarter, or we heard from Kickstarter projects or crowdfunded projects. They they ran ran out of money just at the end, just before they wanted to ship the rewards. They didn't have the money to to spend it on shipping anymore. So, yeah, yeah. Bad timing. Um, then the three D printing it scales to some point, but at some point you need at least one person full-time to maintain the printers. <laughs> um, even if, though our printers had some auto-leveling bed and uh, were quite time-saving in, in the calibration, therefore. Um, then we underestimated the duration of, of the manual tasks like crimping cables, like cutting cables, and um, additionally the, the duration of finding the right suppliers. That was a really big, big uh, time, time consumer. <laughs> um, well, uh, then another advice would be just to think what do we want to do with the project afterwards? If, is it just a project like we thought in the beginning or um, have you, do you have plans to make some kind of company out of it or to, to make the project open source or to get it growing somehow or something like that? It would would have been good if we had done something like that before. <laughs> yeah. And well, we are rich in experience right now, but <laughs> we are not rich uh, in terms of money. <laughs> but we made it <laughs> and it was, was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you both very much for this very interesting first-hand uh, speech or talk. Um, now, as usual, we have some questions. Um, please line up if you have questions over here. We have two microphones over here, two microphones over there. Please just make a row. Um, we start with IRC okay. questions. Sorry, no questions from IRC. Network is down. Okay, so <laughs> we start with number one, please. Okay, um, yeah, cool project. Uh, congratulations. Just wondering... Um, how much effort you put into actually marketing your campaign once it was online and uh, how you went about that? We didn't put any effort in marketing our campaign. We put it online. It was, uh, we reached our goal in 48 hours. It was mostly the uh, visitors coming from Kickstarter recently launched projects. So we were very lucky at that point. And um, then we thought, okay, we may do some marketing if the campaign is slowing down during the time or during the period. But um, in the end, we almost reached our, our upper limit of devices to produce. So there was no, no necessity to marketing something. So, yeah, we didn't do any marketing, but we, we planned uh, the, when to start the campaign. I don't know. I think, I, I'm not sure if that helped, but... I'm, I think so. I do think so. <laughs> so okay. we we did it uh, launch it in, in the US when people came home from work, also on a Friday, I think, yeah. and, and things like that. But no marketing after that. Okay. Well, well we we published some things in the on our social networks. That was it. Okay. Cool. And what was the limit on the project? How many devices did you ship? Two hundred and forty. Oh. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Number two, please. Uh, my question is, how many emails did you have to reply to or people you had correspondence with via email versus those that actually then participated, contributed? Oh, maybe. I mean, we have like 350, 360 backers. I would say five to six uh, times that. 
five, six times. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that Something was. Like Thank you. Number number four, please. Yeah, in the first place, many thanks for this awesome uh, awesome story. Uh, one question. Uh, it, in, in the last slide, you advised uh, to think before uh, about what you want to do, if this is only a project or you want to take s steps further. And then you mentioned that uh, you, in the first place, thought only of it as a project. But you said in the first place. So... Yeah, what, what is the next step for you guys? Well, the next step is to grow the company. We have a company right now. Um, we try to get venture capital. <laughs> we had, um, after the Kickstarter mm. campaign, we had two to three requests per day um, for a device. We couldn't deliver that. So we thought, okay, let's uh, just try out what is going on then. <laughs> Okay, and and uh, but you now thought uh, thought of where where this is gonna end, where you want to end. Uh, for me, it was like, uh, yeah, let's do the the Kickstarter, and then I would I plan on going back to my normal work. Yeah, okay, like that. Yeah, that okay. was the <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Number one, please. Hello, uh, I was wondering why you chose Kickstarter over some other crowdfunding servers and why only Kickstarter and not some like three crowdfunding services? Okay, um, well, we have chosen Kickstarter because it's just a market leader. It is huge. Um, we had the chance because my brother lives in the US. Uh, otherwise, we would have probably been using Indiegogo, um, but we just read the 2013 numbers from Kickstarter. They had some slides, they were very impressive, and so we thought, okay, Kickstarter, would, would it be? Um, well, to make some crowdfunding parallel on platforms, I think it's a huge effort, and it was already too much on Kickstarter the first week. So. I'm not sure if it's a good idea if you don't have a big team behind you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Number two, please. Could you say a few more words about the legal side of things? So you did that as a private person, not as a company. Um, what about regulations and liabilities you might run into? <laughs> someone uh, burns his eye out with it and wants to sue you with it or the FCC tells you that this is not regulated or whatever. So could you just say a few more, more words about um, people interested in producing hardware, what they have to pay attention to, or perhaps yeah. they don't have to? So we, we, we do have a company because of the liability issues. Um, we did do that. And uh, well, th we did, a, we did a, the project as a, as a um, DIY kit, like. Bausatz in German, uh, which shifts the liability to the person uh, or some part of the liability to the person assembling the kit. That was, and also it, it um, uh, takes away re the requirement to, to uh, comply to all the regulations like uh, CE or uh, waste, electronic waste. And everything. So, so you founded the company before you ran yes. the Kickstarter. So which legal form did you choose to do that? An LLC, a li limited liability company. You can do that um, via an online service within an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number one, please. Okay, I've got another question, if you'll permit me. Um, now, do you feel like you've got a sort of uh, community of users, a kind of audience through which you might try and launch similar products in the future? Or do you see it kind of as being the end of this project and then you'd start a, a different kind of venture? We are right now trying to build a community around our Mr. Beam project. Um, we have some quite very active uh, members in the community. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the reason why we want, wanted to do it as open source so people can, like, we can... Uh, continue, or we can decide on if we want to continue it or not, and or and people can just uh, work uh, on their own on it and extend it. Uh, yeah, we really want the people to to wor to work with it and, and and do yeah improve it or develop attachments or or um, I don't know uh, 
the work. Did you and improve uh, it? Yeah. Sorry. Did, did you learn anything from your um, from your backers kind of during the campaign? Did you hear about any feature requests or tweaks, yes. like what color you should paint it or stretch goals or anything like that? Yes, a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. A lot. You have you have to um, yeah somehow you have to just block it. And um, others are quite nice ideas, so you have somehow to manage it. <laughs> yeah, you also learn a lot of, about use cases, people who want to use what they want to use it for. Okay. And uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> let's stop. Sorry. So, sorry, right. sorry to interrupt, but meet, meet you out there. Yeah, so there's enough time outside to meet this guy. So I, please give a round of applause for this very good speech. Thank you.